Hello everybody, it's Christine Aldridge at CL Aldridge Art and I am back for the follow-up video for uh, our Sunday stream that was rudely interrupted by a thunder shower. Uh, for those of you who know me, um, that's me. <laughs> I'm Christine Aldridge. I do draw a series of coloring books. Uh, they range in names from uh, flowers and dreams, uh, all the way through fabulous flowers. Uh, there are a total of 11 of them. I am working today in my eighth book, which is Fabulous Flowers. Uh, we are doing the cover image, and we started it on Sunday in a live stream. Uh, and then, of course, we had a uh, thunder shower here in um, Virginia that uh, resulted in a power outage. Uh, I have since learned that the uh, substation uh, was actually set on fire <laughs> by a lightning strike and uh, it took the power in the area and actually in a large area uh, out for about seven hours. So um, a perfect excuse for a nap and that is in fact what I did. Uh, now as it happens, uh, Mother Nature is once again roaring, and I consider myself very lucky to actually be here uh, as I was getting my uh, coffee, which is now almost gone, because it took my nerves that long to shut, shut off. Uh, I looked out the window and noticed the, uh, you know, the big trash can was still on the street. Uh, because it's today, or actually yesterday, I guess, or today. Uh, is it? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Uh, today is stress day. So I grabbed an umbrella. It, uh, it's raining. And I ran outside to retrieve it out of the street, because it's right where the storm water washes into the storm drain. And, uh, of course, I forgot that it was actively thundering and lightninging. And um, I don't know how many people have ever been uh, within, um, I don't know, say a half mile of a, thund of a lightning strike, um, but it will actually stand your hair up on end. <laughs> and sure enough, there was, uh, I saw the light, no sooner than I saw the light, I heard the crack of thunder, and I'm like, holy heck. I better get out of here. <laughs> so I dropped the trash can off and ran for the house and came in and and uh, and, uh, and then of course you know the adrenaline shakes start. So it took me a little while to <laughs> calm down so I could be here to color. Um, anyway, um. I have made a little more progress on this as I was going along, um, and I just wanted to show you the different processes that I'm using. Um, now, I am coloring with uh, colored pencils. These are the Deli brand colored pencils, which come in this nifty tin. They are a budget uh, polychromos uh, type pencil. They are soft core. Um, they are oil-based. They come in this beautiful tin, uh, and they're marketed under a lot of different names. They do look very similar to a poly. They are beautiful pencils. The uh, paint on them is thick. It, you know, no, they're fully coated. There's no chance of it coming off. Uh, the printing is beautiful and crisp. The wood is hard the core is lovely it goes down like butter it is a very thick core pencil so you get a lot uh, for your money and it comes in of course many different and beautiful and vibrant shades uh, and the price is right they are under thirty dollars under $30 and they behave very similarly 
to a poly from what I am told. They are smooth as butter and they blend beautifully. They are a layering pencil. They're not a, uh, you know, they're not a mashing pencil. So if you're a straight colorist, uh, you may want to look into something that is a little uh, more, well, actually, you could probably color with these. Um, I don't know why not. But these are a perfect layering pencil. And we are going to get started right away. Um, and I'll just show you very quickly some of the things that I did. Uh, when the power got interrupted, we had just... I'm going to turn this over so that we can uh, look at this a little closer. I had just uh, completed the second one of the little uh, turquoise baubles and started to add the uh, pink around the leaves. Now, I did go, go through and added a... Uh, originally, I had left all of this white, but I did go through and put just a, a quick layer of uh, the lighter pink not all the way down, uh, just sort of to blend in the edge of that darker pink. So that's all I did there. Um, I did this with, uh, I, I did add, originally I think in the stream, we only had three pencils of each color. Um, I did add a fourth of each color. Um, and I want to, actually, I want to separate out those greens. I'll use the white to do it. Maybe I'll use the black and the white to do it. Um, so our color palette is pink, gray, and turquoise for the um, accent pieces. And then, of course, the greens. But I keep getting my greens mixed up with my turquoises. So I want to move those off to where that can't happen. So I will oops, put them right there in the case. And we will proceed ahead uh, with this. We'll just ignore the greens for right now. Um, now, on the bobble here, I just use the progressive shades of pink all the way down and then I use the grays and I blended I blended it with the pink pencil and what that did is it gave it a glow very similar to the glow that we were able to get here uh, on the edge of these and I think it makes a very nice effect it uh, really looks more metallic and that's what I was going for. I was going for that sort of metallic look, shiny, obviously shiny here. All my little turquoise gems have the little spots. And uh, then I had, when I think we left, I had only just colored the uh, centers here, the shadows underneath the flower, with the darkest gray that I was using, which was this warm gray, the pencil color here is 167. These are really terrific pencils. Um, they are sequentially numbered. So there's, um, you know, there's no color palette mysteries to solve in these. Uh, but they are really beautiful pencils. And I'm finding that I don't need a blender. This is, of course, Amazon uh, Create Space Paper. And, um, or... Actually, this one is Amazon paper um, because this is my newer book. So it's been printed since Amazon switched us all over to KDP. The paper got slightly better, <laughs> and that's good. Um, and I, uh, so I, I noticed that there wasn't enough contrast. There just wasn't enough in that, uh, that warm gray. If this were a Prismacolor set, I'd call this maybe the 70% warm gray. And what I really want is more of a, um, a 90%. So I did end up going with the black. 
and I uh, darkened up underneath this flower to really make it pop. And hopefully, and I um, want to try and get you past the glare on that so that you can actually see how that works. And um, also the shadows. And uh, I've, I say it before, I even said it today in Dee Dee's stream, uh, her Wednesday stream. Whenever I uh, look at something and I'm dissatisfied with it, I hear Dee Dee's voice saying it's because it's not finished. You need to bump up the contrasts. And so uh, that is what I'm doing. I did the same thing uh, here. I think I had only done a few of these uh, when we ended Sunday's stream. I did end up using the black very lightly uh, to work these out. And I'm much happier with the result of how the, um, I think the using the darker shade really gives it much more of a, of a, a metallic sheen and a look like it is cylindrical instead of flat. So when you're coloring like this, you can uh, achieve an awful lot of effects just with where you put your shading. So <clears throat> now I'm working on the outer ring. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, and just using the two lightest grays uh, to add, and I'll just show you one or two of these, uh, to add, starting with the little circles, and then just working my way lighter, working it back this way, lighter pressure, darker toward the center of this line. And then I can take this light gray and work my sort of flicking stroke out to blend that darker gray in. Not very far, just a little bit, because I want this to be white on top. But it just adds to the impression that this is a tube or a cylinder, and you're seeing it from the side. Sort of steampunky, steampunky. <laughs> Why is that word hard for me to say? <laughs> Hitting those consonants, I need to hit those consonants. So you can even do it with just a little stroke as opposed to the little circles. Whatever way is more comfortable for you to color is how you want to do that. So now let me finish these and I will come right back and we'll work on the next thing. And hello and welcome back. Okay, I have now finished all of the uh, embellishing that I'm going to do on this outer ring. And I thought that I would move on to working on this. Um, and hopefully getting it to match the other one. So for this I need the grays. I'm also going to have my black. But I'm going to work up and wait with the black until I'm done with the grays. So I just started out uh, using the darkest gray, which is the 167. Uh, and I did want to mention that there is a link for these pencils. And this book, uh, and a lot of other stuff uh, that I love, um, below in the video description. I always try to do that. Those are my Amazon links. So 
it doesn't cost you any extra, but um, if you buy things through those affiliate links, then um, I earn a little stipend that I can uh, I get on a gift card, and that's what I use to buy my coloring supplies and uh, um, order books that I uh, give as prizes, things like that. And, of course, um, any other fellow artists' books um, that come out, I buy that way as well. So I'm just working the different grays uh, in, sort of successfully lighter, toward the center. This is really just sort of standard three color blending. When I get to the second layer, I will actually switch and show you a different stroke. Right now I'm using the little circles stroke. Even going over the darker to bring it in with this lightest of the three grays. And now I'm going to go back to the darkest gray, and I'm actually going to turn it. And this is the other stroke, which is the little flicking stroke that you can use. And I find that if I do both, I get a nice, smooth blend. And notice that there aren't any, um, I'm, I've got you zoomed all the way in there aren't any little white spots. You know, uh, oftentimes when you color with your Prismacolors, um, you have to deal with those little white spots when you're dealing with a toothy paper. And um, with these, there are none of those little white spots. Medium gray. Just sort of working it in more toward the center. Once again, a light coat. You don't want to be too heavy handed. When you get to little tight spaces, <clears throat> you almost have to revert back to the little circles. And then, to give it that glow, I use the light pink, the very lightest of the pinks. And just blend with that. And it makes it glow. Now, I still need to work uh, the black and a little bit darker around the edges. But you just keep keep working it until you get it where you want it. So I think really what it needs at this point is the darkest to really bump the contrast on the edges. Now, I am going to go all the way, even on the edges of the pink, because this is supposed to be a shadow, and it would be shadowing even the, the pink bands. And I'm just very not pressing hard, because black is a powerful color. I'm just letting the pencil do the work. 
not really outlining. And then as I move in, I get successfully lighter and lighter with the pressure on that. And then you can go back to your gray. Oops, I hope you can see that. And blend that in just a little bit in the gray areas. Roll it around the other way. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Just a fairly light pressure. There we go. And now I can blend with the pink again. I'm going to add a little bit more of this lighter gray in on this side. Just right there. Go back to the pink. Just sort of blend that down. And the more you're willing to blend your colors, the more your colors will glow. Just like that. On we go. Um, I did, while I was uh, just uh, doodling uh, and talking on the phone, um, I did bump up the color on the very tips of the flowers just a little bit uh, to that darkest shade of pink and I just think it really pops them. Uh, I also worked out the greens uh, on this so I'll do this side for you when we get to that point uh, but I was going to do these next and um, for those that were not here on Sunday. So I've got the four uh, turquoise pencils in my hand and they range in number. The lightest is 138. Uh, here's 139 and 140. And then I jumped to 141. So these are the four uh, blue blues that I've chosen to work with. And this darkest one uh, is what I chose for the... Um, ends of every other one here so I'm not working it down too far just a little bit because I'm going to build on these and these are really just the darkest points uh, out here at the end so now I'll take my next darkest and work it up just a little bit, gradiating out the color. And the next in line, a little bit, you know, I'm not going very far with these because I want to preserve the, uh, the white sheen as I'm working it up. And then finally, this is the lightest of the turquoise. So I can work it a little closer together. You don't have to leave a very large white space, but you don't want it to be so small that it gets lost.
Okay, and then I will do the lightest two and I'll use the light one, the darker of the lightest two, up here and up here. I'm just making stripes. You can color it all solid. You can color it uh, any way you want. I just thought that I would give it a little... Um, and on this, I'm going all the way around. I just thought that I would give it a little visual interest by alternating the stripes. And then I'll use the lightest of the aquas to then bring that center back down to meet the other one. Now I am using a fairly firm pressure uh, on this part. And like everything else, you just sort of work it until you are happy with it. Now with that lighter shade underneath, even though this is the darkest color, it mutes it just a little bit. And then I can go over that center section with the white. And if I go in a straight up and down, just not a lot of pressure, just uh, like a medium, medium pressure, it blends just enough of the light turquoise down to where it takes away the harshness of the sheen. And there we go. So there is that one. Now, moving along to, uh, back to the pinks. Now, I do have, why do I have five pinks in my hand? Um, not really sure. They keep multiplying. <laughs> but I keep using, oh, I know why. Um... Well, I thought I knew why. Because I've used five in various various places. So let me put that one aside for right now. And that one aside for right now. Because what I want is this one, which is the 119. I'm trying to remember what I did on these, um, these bottom two. But I, I remember using the 119. And I used a straight stroke, a straight flicking stroke. And the reason why I use this one is because on the down stroke, as I'm coming up, it gives a naturally light area um, as your pressure lifts, as you're lifting the pencil. Um, and I think it creates a nice uh, kind of jagged edge there or uh, not jagged, feathered, a feathered edge. Maybe it wasn't that one. Maybe it was, was it this one? Let's try it and find out. Yeah, it might have been this one. At which point in time, that's the 120. But I don't think so. I think it really was this one. Okay. Take that back. It's the 119. Fortunately, the colors are similar enough to where if you start one with the wrong color, it's not likely to show. By the time you're done getting your blending done and all of that kind of stuff. So, so anyway, how is everybody today? I hope that you are all doing uh, wonderfully well. 
and finding a little time to relax and color. And um, thank you to everybody who comments on my videos. Uh, it means so much. <coughs> I learned just recently that the <coughs> excuse me the um, YouTube algorithm, <laughs> which no one has ever been able to figure out, one of the great mysteries of YouTube. Why do some videos get seen and some don't? Um, actually looks at engagement. You know, the, the number of comments uh, that a video gets. Not chat comments, but um, actual comments below. So thank you to all of you who comment and tell me what you think of the video and if there's uh, content that you would like to see that perhaps I'm not putting out or a specific, I need to sharpen this a little bit, specific medium that you want to see, something that you want to talk about, something that you would, you know, that you would like to hear me talk about I'm happy to do whatever I can to help others get through a difficult time or a you know a a, a um, I'm just looking at my notes uh, and I did want to say that there is, and I've only seen it once, there is a commercial. Now, I always, when I go to, um, uh, now my channel is not monetized, but uh, when I go to channels that are, uh, there's usually an ad, and I always try and watch at least one of the ads, um, because th that's how channels can earn money. Uh, one of many ways, but um, uh, at any rate, there is one now that I am going to watch whenever it comes on, and it is, it's by the, um, sorry, I'm, I just want to cover this up just in case there are notes here that uh, I don't want other people to see. Uh, it's called the Blues Community. It is a subscription channel. Now, this is just the ad, but what it is, is Eric Clapton and Joe Bonamassa <laughs> playing together, uh, playing guitars together and uh, singing, and it is an absolutely <coughs> fantastic commercial for the, um, now, I love the blues. I love, uh, I love blues guitar. I love B.B. King. I love Muddy Waters. Oh, uh, I love Sean Colvin. I love, um, uh, oh gosh, Lyle Lovett. I love, um, and, and, you know, uh, of course, I said B.B. King. Uh, gosh, there are so many. But of course, I love Eric Clapton and I love Joe Bonamassa. So to me, that was just pretty cool that uh, we could um, get to watch a commercial like that. It's about five minutes long and worth every second. <laughs> worth every second of watching it. Anyway, I love it when that happens. Now I've got the lightest pink. I used the other pink, and I'm just using this lightest pink to sort of work a little bit down. I don't want to cover color the entire area. I just want to uh, knock off any harsh harshness out of the um, out of the line of pink here as we're going along. It 
it just made me so happy to watch that commercial. And I am at a point, I looked up today, uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, TV channels, I talk about it all the time, it's a free TV channel, um, I don't have cable, I've got, uh, you know, I've got a, a digital antenna on my television, and I get a ton of channels, one of them is the absolutely awesome uh, H&I, which is Heroes and Icons. And I think I talked about that a little bit in my last video series. Um, they do old westerns uh, in the early morning and daytime hours. But it's also the station that I watch um, every night, every weeknight, starting at 8 o'clock. They broadcast an hour of each of the iterations of Star Trek. So Star Trek, the original... Um, Next Generation, uh, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and then finally Enterprise. And that ends at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. And after that is 2, 3, 4, 3 hours of NYPD Blue. Now... I was, I looked it up today, NYPD Blue started broadcasting, or st the first time it aired was on September 21st of 1993. And it was on uh, a record, uh, an original record setting. Now this record has now been beaten out by um, SVU, uh, Criminal Minds SVU. Uh, it was on for 11 and a half years. And uh, during that time, it starred the same people. There were only ever one or two, um, well, actually, there were a number of people that left, but and they were notable people, but uh, in the first season, it really was different than anything else that we had ever seen on television. The way that it was filmed, the uh, which is very much the way that they filmed The Wire, you know, lots of uh, still camera work, uh, lots of flash cuts, uh, you know, things going back and forth, showing you all sorts of different stuff going on at the same time and um, but it was the, the thing that made it unique is that it was it depicted not characters although ultimately they were characters in fiction but they were real people you know um, the, the characters were there was they were just they, they were they had faults and uh, you know and uh, and you just you forget how good that show was when it originally started and of course it stayed good it stayed good all the way through to the very last episode and so anyway uh, they did. <laughs> the reason why I'm waxing sort of poetic on it is uh, last night we saw the very last episode and tonight we are seeing the very first episode because of course they started all over again um, and so tonight was the uh, the first two hours of tonight was the two hour premiere uh, and so the, the juxtaposition of knowing how it ends and then getting to watch how it started is just fun. <laughs> just fun. Um, and, you know, of course, everybody remembers when uh, Jimmy Smith's character, Bobby Simone, died. But, you know, do, do you all remember who originally played that role or who played that person, Andy's partner? 
was David Crusoe, and it was the best acting that he'd ever done. Um, unfortunately, I was not a fan of CSI Miami. Uh, where, you know, which was his next role that was, you know, not based off of a failing um, pilot that he did. But he originally left NYPD Blue to go be a movie star. And, of course, that didn't work out for him, so. And in the meantime, Dennis Franz, who, uh, who never left uh, NYPD Blue, went on to win, what, 13 Emmy Awards or... Yeah, uh, no, not 30, he won 11, though. I think he, he won in every year that he was nominated. Um, okay, so th I just did that one, and so you saw how that one was done. Now let's uh, work on these, uh, this, and I'll show you how I did this one. Um... Basically, I just sort of at random chose uh, some of the little, uh, you know, little scales to make turquoise. And I'm only putting a little tiny bit of the super dark uh, turquoise in to the very bottoms where it would look like um, look like they were attached. And there's no rhyme or reason here. You just pick out which ones you think would, uh, you know, probably not two or three together, but because um, these are just accents. And then maybe this one up here. And then I think I chose not the lightest, but the middle one. Just look. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. So I chose the middle one. And I am using fairly hard pressure. Just sort of blending this in. This isn't a you know a layering one. It's just a uh, just a color it in one. But I really love that show. And my normal uh, I, I maybe it is my age. Maybe it is uh, maybe it is the the quality of television these days, but there I find that there is very little um, on TV that interests me. I don't really have any interest at all in reality TV. So um, things like Love Island and all of that, <clears throat> those shows are so heavily scripted. Uh, and they, they always are designed for, for controversy. You know, there just doesn't seem to be any let up on that and uh, like I love Dancing with the Stars that's the kind of reality TV that I like but um, you know to each his own and uh, I am of an age though where privacy in certain matters is <laughs> appreciated <laughs> shall we say um And me being involved in somebody's love life, uh, especially a false narrative, you know? Because none of those people ever ends up married to anybody. The only, the last one that did, I think, was Krista McCullough. And she happened to have been the very first one. So they got it right. Well, that was the... Uh, not Krista McAuliffe. Um, oh, uh, Krista and Ryan. That's it. I don't remember what their last name is. Krista McAuliffe was the... Um, 
was a uh, astronaut who uh, a the teacher who was killed. Uh, yeah, the the yes, when the Challenger blew up. Sorry about that. That was a space shuttle, for those who might not know. And, um... So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just putting in a little bit of the darker pink. And I'm playing around because I'd forgotten what colors I had used. You don't, I mean, they don't all have to be exactly the same, and um, they don't all have to be perfect or anything like that. You just want to get the colors in, and you can play with your layering, you know, maybe make some of them dark and some of them light. Um... Just like looking at a, uh, you know, if you saw something like this in nature, with the light playing on it, there's going to be a ton of different little fractions of light that you can see on things. Because this is all going to be in shadow later. Okay. So just like that. There we go. And then over here, I did the same, you know, the same deal. Uh, I, you know, I just chose a few of these. And actually, I need to grab this because it's the darker. And, you know, maybe do that one and this one down here. And maybe that one there. So I'll do some of these. Whoops. And I've got the lightest here. See how that works. Now, I think I'm on a little bit darker. And so I've got, how many did I put here? One, two, oh, ah, there's a bunch. Okay, so maybe I'll choose three more. Uh, maybe this one and like playing tic-tac-toe and <laughs> there's no place I can go <laughs> that isn't two together there's one and we'll do that one up there <laughs> that's funny Okay, so now I can choose some pink ones to do. Uh, maybe this one. And that one. And that one. And that one. And that one. And maybe this one. 
even though those two are right next to each other. So I'm just blending that darker part into this lighter part using hard pressure because I'm only putting one, one layer. Okay, so now that leaves some, you know, some white ones, which are just fine. Can even. Okay, so now uh, I have the three main grays, and I want this to have a very light feel. So I'm going to uh, just start with the two lighter of the grays, uh, and I'm going to start kind of down the middle here with the lightest shade of the gray and just do the centers and the reason why I'm doing this is to preserve it as the lighter spot because then I can work the secondary gray out toward the edges and still leave the sort of middle part of it the lighter gray. Without creating a harsh line because th this gray pencil is going to slide right over the lighter gray that's already underneath. And you can feel it catch on the tooth as it does. And that is a tough can. That's a, the grays are kind of a tough, uh, they're tough to see on camera going down. But they look something like that. And then I'm just going to keep working this. from dark to light on the inside. And now I'm coming from the outside, the outside edge where I want the darkest to be. So now I can use the lighter gray and I am just whispering it right across the um, the colors are right across the the area so that I'm not laying down a lot of pigment just layering patiently the key to that smooth blend is really in the patience um, okay So this is a third layer of the darker or the number two gray. And now I'm going to pick up the number three gray and come in a little bit, not much. From the outside, and I'm also going ahead and going right over, at least the, on the outer edge, I'm going right over the dots and everything on this outer edge, because that way it gives a natural shadow to the uh, uh, polka dots, whether or not they are pink or blue or white. And it gives everything sort of a little puffy feel 
when it's light on the in, lighter on the inside like that. You can even add a little white if you want. And I think that that is good for now. Just adding a, a little bit darker right on that outer edge. Just bumping it in just a tad. It's really subtle. <coughs> but it's there. Okay. Now for the, uh, let's see, you can't see that, can you? Uh, what did I do? I did the, um, the doohickeys here. <laughs> the borders I did in turquoise and the center of course I did in pinks and that center I did in turquoise so uh, starting with the turquoise we will roll it over here because it's easier for me to work on this well it, no it's not it's actually easier for me to work on that way it's easier this way so I don't have the ridge under my wrist all right so I'm going to start out Now, I attribute my knowing how to do this part to watching uh, Karen at Zucchini Kitty because she does this. She starts out with a dark in her corners and then works it into a light. And only she's just a master at um, other color combinations. And when I mean other color, I mean like, you know, mixing up a a pink and a purple just the right pink and the right purple or you know or a, a, a blue with a green but just the right green and um, it's it, it's a it's a color it, it's a color vision talent uh, of course she's just so talented anyway but but it's it, it just like the colors that she has chosen for her um, for her work in Ink House. I you know the Ink House. I still have not been brave enough to color even one picture in that book. And for those who might be watching, because I know I have a number of new subscribers, if you are unfamiliar with the book the ink house this is it and uh this, um, we're going to go on what dd would call a rabbit trail and um this is the ink house i'll put a link to this below because it is just too amazing and everybody should own a copy it is by an artist by the name of rory dobner uh, who is not a coloring book artist by the way um and uh but his work is amazing and has been made into this beautiful book uh it's a story book um and the the art in it is simply fabulous credit where credit is due we originally saw this over at the modernist colorist um who somehow managed to get a hold of a copy he has um Although he has not made any recent videos, uh, it, all of his older videos are there. And he has got some, showing some amazing books. Amazing books. The guy has book radar. Um, but this is uh, the type, this is the front entrance of this particular house. And it is, of course, called the Ink House. And it is a mysterious mansion built long ago in the days when people used gallons of ink to write love letters, poems, and elaborate shopping lists. 
and it just has this amazing art that invite it's you know it's not it's an art book it doesn't it it was never intended to be a coloring book but so many of us uh except me uh, have actually colored in it and uh so you've got the annual ink house extravaganza can begin and the artist has been called away and so uh, all of these Creatures have come to the house to celebrate. This is Freddy Foxglove, and this is Eku the elephant, um, fresh in from his world tour. Uh, this, of course, is ink, and uh, what is amazing about this, this you know desk with the books and the candles and the stained glass, uh, is that if you get out your magnifying glass, you can actually read what's written on these lists and what's written in this book. And pages fly. Uh, but Karen uh, at Zucchini Kitty, and oh, I mean, look at the look at the gorgeousness of Clarence the Caterpillar and his greatest hits. And the butterflies choreo choreograph a dance. And, um, but, so Karen has been coloring this. And her colors are just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. She should illustrate or color illustrations for a living. Um, for print purposes. They are just absolutely wonderful. Uh, and excessively bubble baths are taken. Oh, excessively bubbly baths are taken. Of course, the polar bear, the walrus with the champagne, and the kraken. And there's tea and the mice in the tea <coughs> playing hide and seek. Charlie Cheetah Huxley, the, uh, what is Huxley? He's a hedgehog. And this, of course, is uh, William DeWolf. <laughs> I love that. And uh, sits on the chaise lounge drinking mocktails while he wonders what's for dinner this evening. And there's, of course, a sheep. And there's Geraldine the giraffe uh, eating dessert first, of course. Why not? Herman the hermit crab. Every page is just such a delight. Uh, this is Mary Shelley. Uh, comes in a hard helmet firmly in place. And, of course, this is Mary Shelley, <laughs> which is the name of the turtle. And there's her hard hat. Uh, and this is the maestro, who is the rat who plays the piano. Reggie the rock ape. And his beautiful assistant there, Cockatiel. Oh, no, that's Sid the Punk Parrot. Sorry, Sid the Punk Parrot. This is Francois the Frog. Uh, and in order to escape the racket, um, the one guest who shall remain nameless retires to bed at the perfect time. And, of course, that is uh, the cat. The cat with no name. Not everyone is a music lover because they're such snobs. And this, of course, is a uh, after, okay. Many hours pass in riotous chaos until night falls and after Mary Shelley has slowly but surely done her last round and Reggie has packed away his guitar, the animals reluctantly curl up in bed. 
And so there's the, the, the box and the bunny. The owl and the raptors of the observatory. The Pugsley twins. Just amazing snails. Louie. There's a, a bumblebee, Prunella. That's what she is. And of course, there's now a balloon on the horizon approaching the house, which signals the return of the artist. The artist is returning. And uh, so now all of the animals will have to abandon the ink house. And so they're all running away. Panic ensues as the animals prepare to leave. And um, this is Nigel, the, uh, the owl, and Bill the badger, who can't resist taking a few things before he leaves. Because <coughs> badgers are thieves. Freddy is the last to take his reluctant leave of the house. And the annual ink, extravag ink house extravaganza is over for another year. They all go away until next year when the artists will go on vacation and they will all get together again. And uh, then, of course, there are all of these insects throughout the house. And so you need to be able to find them. And once again, if you get out your magnifying glass, you can read all of the notes on these little guys. It's just an amazing book. Okay. A rabbit trail ended. I may end up having to cut that part out of the video if it runs too long. Hopefully it won't. And okay, so back to what we were doing. <laughs> which is this, that book, I, I just, I have, I, I know I should color in my copy. Uh, actually, let's see, what did I do? I used that one and that one already. Okay, so I need this one. And I know that I should color in it. I just don't know if I'm good enough yet because everything is a learning experience. I know I definitely want to do it with ink tens. Um, and I'm still too uh, attached to too much pigment. And so I've been watching, I've been studying what Karen's been doing in it and her pigment is she, she waters everything down so that it is very, very subtle. And it's because of the subtlety that it works so well. So, I, and I, yeah, I don't want to copy her. Um, I want it to be my own. But I, I also know that I can't do it yet. <laughs> but someday soon. I'm not afraid of it. I just don't want to mess it up. All right, so now I'm adding just a little bit of white, and we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to do the same thing. Choose the darkest for down here, where it would be the most shadowed. Then sort of work my way up. A little bit more. And a little, you know, off to the lightest shade. There. 
again, not being, you know, not doing a lot of blending on this particular um, section. It is just a straight gradient. And the same thing is true of this little section here. So I'll start very, very uh, close to the bottom. I'm going to turn this over just a second because now I'm, I'm sort of, I can put my hand closer on this side of the ridge. And uh, just work it down. I'm actually going to skip because this is a short uh, piece. I'm going to skip that second dark blue. Just roll it over. And just go straight to the medium. And then down into the very lightest of the blues. Just like that. And exactly the same thing on this last one. This time I'm not going to skip the middle blue. Or the number two blue, I'm just going to go for it. And number three. And finally, at the tip, the very lightest color. Then grab the pinks. And I probably can skip the very darkest of those pinks and go here. Now here I am going to layer a little bit, but I'm going to put a fairly dark bit down there. Then go with my second color. Second darkest. And work that, blend that out just a little bit. Then the middle one, kind of out to the point, maybe a little bit around the point, curving it so it's more like a U. And then the lightest one. out here. Now, if I remember correctly, I didn't particularly care for that. So I'm going to go back to the number two and just bring it out and then very lightly go over that uh, lighter pink to sort of make it a more pretty uh, glowy blend. And then I can go over it all with the white and it looks a little more, um, looks a little more glowy. Glowy, uh, this is not a real word by the way. <laughs> if you look the word up in the dictionary, you will not find the word glowy as a description. <laughs> glowing. There we go. Okay, um, I will uh, turn off the camera. I will finish these two and this, and then we will move on to doing the, uh, um, actually, I think with these done and that done, I may be able to decide uh, what I want for these to be, whether or not I want to do them in grays, which I think I'm going to. 
uh, with maybe jewels in the, uh, you know, use the circles for jewels or uh, do them in either the pink or the turquoise. So the jury or, or even green, the jury is still out on those, uh, but we will find out when we return. Be right back. This has really been an exercise in three-dimensional coloring, um, and I carried on with uh, this uh, wing out here. I debated with myself whether or not it should be silver, and uh, I did decide, ultimately, that I did want to go for a metal effect on it. So uh, I colored it uh, with shading on uh, this side to give it a curve this way. Uh, and then also kept the lightest part um, in an arc this way uh, so that it looks like it is metal pieces bent over this way and this way. <laughs> so I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But I think it's pretty. And then, of course, I did do uh, turquoise gems. Uh, in the little spaces. I had to decide whether or not those were holes or gems, and I ultimately decided on the gems. So that is where we are on this one, and I thought I would just continue on and uh, show you how I did the silver over here, and hopefully see if we can get at least one of these uh, flowers done. Uh, choosing the uh, darkest of the three grays that I had and removing the white from my hand for right now. Uh, I'm going to start with the darkest one and I am going to roll my page over uh, and start down here at the bottom and just feather up a little bit A very light coat and I'm, I am truly doing the color mapping part right now and that is exactly what I did over here I didn't count I couldn't visualize it for a while of exactly where the way I wanted it to be so I just worked light shades And I apologize that I have uh, had to take a two breaks so far. Uh, for those of you who know, uh, I am affected by um, human air. Uh, and my breathing gets very, very tough in the summertime. Uh, because we live in a high humidity area and we are at present uh, suffering uh, afternoon thunderstorms afternoon early evening thunderstorms so so I'm just working it a little bit at a time coming around the edges Now I'm also going to start with, oops, I need to sharpen my pencil for this. And these do sharpen beautifully, by the way. But I also want to come down here because I want to give these make them look like metal plates. So I'm going to be especially dark with it. But I am narrowing the line. As it comes up. So in other words, 
a little wider at this part, but very narrow here, and that will give it more of a uh, look like it. it's a curling or a curving plate, a curving metal plate. Roll it to the other side. The light source is directly over it, is the way that I am. So I'm going to shade both sides. Anyway, I hope that everybody is having a had a wonderful week and you're now looking forward to your weekend. For those of you who have kids getting ready to go back to school, uh, I hope that's going well for you. If you have stress or <clears throat> anything like that going on in your life, hopefully you're finding time to color. Okay, now we can to aid that a little bit, uh, and hopefully you find some comfort in it. So now I'm going to work this up a little bit more with my second color, just going right over everything. Not, you know, you don't, as I, uh, I'm, so I'm going over it a little bit more toward the bottom and then just feathering it out. And these pencils are wonderful because if you keep a very light touch, they are just an amazing blending pencil. And you can see it uh, start to take shape as you go along, which is why it is important when you're doing these to sort of go slow if you don't have a vision of what it is and then put something curved and metallic in your brain. Uh, you know, maybe a, a the way a, a, a spoon, uh, a silver spoon, you know, when the handle bends over. And you'll start to see what your, you know, what your, what your finished part is going to look like. I, oops, I forgot to do this little edge over here. Darker under, around. There we go. And I'm going to keep my highlight going in this direction. You know, the lightest part of it. And of course, coloring, uh, you can straight color, but if you want to color for dimension and do some blending, then light layers are the order of the day. And patience. It's important not to get impatient when you're coloring for blends and and as you get more practiced at it, you'll get faster and faster at it. Okay, now I'm going to roll it back over. And do the same thing on this side. Still not going up very far. Just 
just because ultimately you want this to appear as if it is shiny silver or if you were coloring for bronze or gold you would be using yellows or uh, siennas okay now <clears throat> I'm going to take the uh, mid gray again just sort of blend this these out just a tiny tiny bit we are going to add an even darker shade uh, to these but for right now we're just blending off that hard edge softening up the colors Hopefully this is a good angle for you to be able to see that. I'm trying to hold it out from underneath the glare of these lights. So that you can see how subtle it is. And then I'm going to go with the lightest shade. and blend a nice soft curve on each one. Substantially wider at the bottom. so that it does look like it's curved this way. Now I'm going to take the black and I'm going to only go a very narrow space and this right here would be sort of the top of our curve. So I want to make sure I keep it as light as possible, just right there. And that helps to give, <coughs> excuse me, um, added, whoops. I can blend that out. Uh, sorry, I lost my focus there for a second. Yeah, there we go. And once again, I've got the lightest of the grays, just keeping it very, very close in and just softening that dark black up. But it just adds a little bit more contrast to each of the plates and makes them look like they have, uh, <clears throat> like they're stepping down. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know if anybody else has uh, breathing issues with humidity, but it feels like you are kind of feels like you're drowning, but not quite. I do much better in the spring and the fall. And winter is bliss because the air is dry.
and I am a cold. I like the cold. I don't like it too cold. <laughs> Which is why I don't live in like Minnesota or something like that. But Or Montana. Or the Dakotas. Okay. So that really adds to that. Now we can continue building uh, a second layer sort of in, in, starting once again toward the outside. Not a heavy layer, but just another light layer. Once again, sort of feathering it down. Go ahead and pull this one. Might as well do all three at the same time. Again, not too far down. Just a little bit further with your mid color. Because all you're really trying to do is create a shadow over this part and the lightest of the grays and you can use this light gray to blend out any issues you might have going on up there Get back to my darkest shade here, just around the edge. And blend in my lightest to just sort of leave a little sheen going on there. Same thing on the other side. Oops, <laughs> sorry. And there we go. Okay, it is looking pretty good. I think we need <clears throat> to maybe, excuse me, bring our darks just a tad further down. Being very, very light with this darkest shade. Just trying to even it out with the other side. Just a little bit. And I think I know what the problem is on this side. 
think I need to go with a darker color still. Oops, middle gray. Just sort of blending that out. Softening it up. And again with the gray. Okay, so I, I think I just put a very, very light, light metal or light silver. across the white on this side. I think that's what I'm seeing. So let me do that on this side too. Yeah, that was it right there. And I might continue to tweak that, but you get the idea. Now I'm gonna take the black I'm going to darken up where it's coming out from underneath this, these tubes. Not moving it very far. Just a tiny bit each time. And then I can use that darkest gray or the <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the lightest gray. To soften that harsh edge up. Well, it's not really a harsh edge, but just to soften it up even further for that very subtle bent over metal effect. Yay. Okay, come right back and do the gemstones. Well, hi everybody and welcome back. I cannot believe it has taken me a week to make this video. Um, it is, uh, already Saturday night at, uh, 10.06 p.m., and I am nowhere near as finished as I had wanted to be on Monday afternoon. Um, as you can see, I, uh, I, uh, carried on with, uh, choosing, I wanted to see if I could choose the colors, uh, to show you one of these flowers, uh, and it turned into a perfect uh, opportun demonstration opportunity because I made a mistake. And so let me zoom you down here to show you what I did wrong. Um, I decided that I was not happy with uh, having done that in pinks and blues. <clears throat> I think it should be if it's going to be tritones it need or dual toned it should probably be the silver so but i'd already done it you know obviously i'd done this one um and it, i think it's fine that it works with the overall color palette on this little one because it's in this line with these um other multicolored things but i don't think it works very well on the big one so can you, if you make a mistake like that, can you change it? And the answer is yes, with these pencils, you can. Um, eraser. I love my uh, retractable eraser. And I literally just... erased it. You, you don't want to, um, I'm trying not to go outside the lines because I don't want to smear the color all out in here. But see how it, 
erases quite easily. Maybe not easily, but nicely. And I'm not going to worry about trying to get into that little tight space because I had done that in a very dark color anyway, sort of a black. And um, so I just want to get not even all of it, but a large amount of it off of these. And then you can add the silver or your gray colors and just start again. Just do the, the leap again. Sometimes you do have to work on it and see how it makes your eraser kind of icky. So just erase it off onto a piece of scrap card or something like that. But you can erase colored pencil. I've certainly done this with any variety of colored pencils. Um, you know, of course, you can't erase things like um, ink tents or markers, but colored pencil, you surely can. Let's see if I can go across a little bit. And the gray and the blue, even if you don't get it all off, will still work together. This is another reason why blending is important. Because that way, you haven't crushed the tooth of your paper all the way down. So now, those are good enough to be able to do in this lighter color. So as far as I'm concerned, that's just one more reason to love these pencils. To love these pencils. Um, okay, so uh, might as well show you on this one. Um, all I, you know, all I did was uh, color in. The, no big secret. I just used pretty much the same method that we used on the uh, on. This uh, big one over here on these leaves. Sort of darkest to the outside. Leaving the um, leaving the area closest to the tip. This is the medium color and then leaving the area closest to the tip for the lightest. And see even that light blue cast under there works pretty well. So let me move it this way. Since this one didn't erase quite as um, much as this one did, but we can still make it work. So this is the darkest, closest in, where it would be shadowed, and then the middle. And then the lightest. And then I did use <clears throat> just a little bit, excuse me, of white at the tip. So let me finish that one up and I'll be right back. 
Well, good morning, everybody. It is now Monday morning of the following week after I started this. As you can hear, I don't really have much of a voice left after yesterday's uh, stream. Uh, the good news is, is that the community is supposed to let up a little today, which is nice. It will return again tomorrow. Um, but as I was working on this, <coughs> excuse me, to get to the gemstones part, it occurred to me that I am actually using a different method of these flower petals than I've used anywhere uh, in any of the flowers that I've done so far. And so I did want to show you this just as sort of an alternative uh, method of blending. It's got a lot of colors. <laughs> and so I'll bring it down so you can actually see what I'm doing. And I am still using all of the pinks. Um, one thing that I did do between when I shut the camera off a few minutes ago and or a couple of days ago um, and now is, is I did decide to go ahead and change the blue to silver on the little one as well. I think it's a much better, a much more elegant look than um, having that one also be uh, all three colors that I'm using. So, um, on this, and I'll start a fresh one here in just a second so that you can see exactly what I did. If you want to. If not, skip forward to the gemstones part and as usual my videos are almost always best watched <coughs> at one and a half times at 1.5 speed otherwise sometimes I talk so slow <laughs> that I drive even myself crazy uh, okay so I did start I've got the you know I've got five pinks all in the same uh, side of pink and in gradating colors. So all five of them are in each petal and I really start with a kind of massive take on the darkest color. And just using the little circles, I work my way around to the absolute edge, but only a tiny bit of that edge. <clears throat> I woke up this morning with a ridiculously pounding head. Um, and the only kind of headaches I get are sinus headaches. So, um, and this is, and I only get them in the high summer. If I keep turning it off, it's so I can have a coughing attack. Although they seem much better right now. so. And I just keep working my way progressively down. <coughs> Never getting all the way to the edge. Because I want to leave that 
for the lightest of the pinks. And then I will just go ahead and darken this up. The center bed. And that was fairly firm pressure. But now I'm going to go back to lighter pressure. And just blend that in. The same way. Working, working the pencils all the way down the color line. Until I get that perfect gradient. That I'm looking for. I am going to run this one all the way out. This is my last pencil before the light one. I'm going to run it all the way out to the edge. I've already got a little bit of the lighter out on the edge. Not pressing hard, just a light layer to sort of tint it and then come back in with the lightest shade to blend the whole thing over. And that gives that beautiful glowing smooth gradation that just brings it from very light on the edges to dark in the center. And that will work on any kind of gradi gradation that you do. <clears throat> if you're going to gradiate your colors, be sure that you're using a lot of the colors. I find that you can do it with the three colors. Um, but even in a small space like this, if you use five in the same family, you get a much smoother grade. So I will continue on and then we will do those gemstones. Be right back. Okay, yay. All right, so now uh, that flower is done and the bottom uh, greenery is done and all we have left are these uh, gemstones. So uh, now on this one, I made the highlight just using the white on the page and I kept it sort of toward the bottom inside of the stone. So I'm gonna try and do the same thing here and I've never really uh, colored one that way before so it's going to be an experiment to see if I can do it normally I do them the other way just trying to figure out which is the best angle for me to start with and I think I'm going to go ahead and turn it to this angle and of course now the best gemstone tutorials uh, on YouTube are those that are put out by Vitruvian Art, by Rose Rambo at Vitruvian Art. And she is the most amazing at gemstone that I have ever seen. Um, and she has taught other people uh, to be as good, but um, but she is just incredible. Okay. So if you, as she is one of my featured channels, uh, so if you go to uh, the channels tab, on my menu bar up there, uh, you should, there'll be a link to her. And she is amazing. Now, I have the darkest of the 
colors in my hand right now and I'm just going over some of these areas lightly and I am leaving a lighter spot out here which I am going to now fill in with the lightest shade and this is all going to blend out I've been a little heavy handed on this first one so I'm just adding the brighter of the greens the middle green kind of going all over the areas that I've already done what I'm trying to do is make this one look like it is sunk in um, below this line. Back to the lightest. Or another layer there. Back to my um, second darkest. There we go. Hopefully I've got my hair out of the shot. I've got my head tilted sort of under the camera so I can get as close to this as possible. <laughs> uh, I cannot believe it has taken me so long to color this page. Now I'm really burnishing it down See, and that creates sort of a, a watery effect. I don't know. Can you see that? By adding in the extra bits of color, it creates a little more of a watery effect in those. And I will do one more. We'll uh, go with this one up here. And uh, this is an exercise that does require your pencils to be pretty sharp. See how I just left a little white space there. And I'm going to come around just leave another one right there so I've used the darkest, and now this is the lightest. And now I'm going to use oops, the second darkest. And by using the second darkest to go over the first darkest, you actually darken the first darkest up. Maybe add just a tad of the lighter in. Kind of right around in there. Lightly over the lightest part that you left. Keeping going around that white spot. And then you can blend it all together. Now you could take your time and do, you know, 15 coats of color or 15 layers of color on these. But quite frankly, I don't have the patience for that uh, today. I kind of want to get this one done. So, pretty much that is um, how we do that. And I don't believe that I have finally gotten to the point where I am happy with this coloring that we began uh, Sunday, which I believe was the 5th of August, 4th of August. I think we started this on the 4th of August, which is when we lost power. Um, yeah, because yesterday's show, we were working on this, which is still a work in progress. 
and I will be filming bits of this next. This is my um, uh, Moongazer dragon that is in my Etsy shop now. Uh, of course, all of my books are always in my Etsy shop. This particular one is fabulous flowers. I hope that you will consider uh, this, by the way, is the same image we just colored. Only this one was done by um, uh, by my dear friend um, Virginia Sanders Cole, who does almost all of my covers. So, isn't it gorgeous? And um, this may show up uh, on a piece of fabric. Who knows? Um, I might even make a card from it. You know, shrink it down and... and uh, use it on the front of a card. I kind of like it on the white background. And um, I hope that you like it too. I hope that you um, learned something from this particular video. I hope that you will give the uh, Deli uh, Star Joy colored pencils a try. Once again, there is a link below. Price point for the 72 set is under $30. And they are a beautifully performing, budget-friendly pencil. So, thank you so much for joining me here at CL Aldridge Art. Until we meet again, please color something pretty. Bye, everybody.